And so we've got Anthony Ryder from South Lyon, Michigan, recently selected as the Lions 2020 Fan of the Year. He has a passion about sports broadcasting. With the 112th selection in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Detroit Lions select Amon Ross St. Brown, wide receiver, USC. One cry, baby! The Detroit Lions 2023 season is officially over. After having a 12 and 5 regular season, winning the NFC North, winning multiple playoff games this season at home, the Detroit Lions fell just 3 points short of a trip to the Super Bowl, which means we are officially in the Detroit Lions offseason. It means it's time to officially take a look at upcoming free agents, upcoming contracts, upcoming draft prospects, and upcoming events as to how the Detroit Lions can improve their team to hopefully next season repeat what they did in the regular season, repeat what they did up to the NFC Championship game, and this time around win the whole Thing. So with that being said, all of that starts today with the re-signing of free agents. The Detroit Lions currently have 29 free agents available. They have 21 unrestricted free agents, 5 restricted free agents, as well as 3 exclusive right free agent deals. And today, we are going to take a look at everybody. We're going to take a look at who should be re-signed, who should walk, who should be signed back from their exclusive contracts. And of course, take a look at how the roster is going to look, potentially, if these re-signings do come to fruition, and how the Detroit Lions need to go into free agency and the draft looking at so with that being said let's take a look at the guys to re-sign first now there's a lot of players i think the lions could go after in this free agency cycle i think that they like a lot of the guys on their roster and i think with so many different players right nearly half the team being potential free agents this year and most of the depth being free agents I do think the Detroit Lions are going to look to bring back a lot of these pieces, but I don't think it's going to necessarily cost them a premium price, right? So we're going to start off with Emmanuel Mosley, a player that last year signed with the Detroit Lions for $1 million, a really, really cheap veteran minimum for a player that when healthy has been a really good cornerback over the last couple of years. He's only five foot 10. He's a little bit undersized, but he's really strong, presses really well, stays in route with wide receivers, is able to move wide receivers off their spot and fight for the ball in the air. He's a guy that the Lions were really hoping could be impactful this year and unfortunately played just five snaps in his first game back before re-injuring his ACL and being out the remainder of the season. I think Emmanuel Mosley could come back once again for a one-year, $1 million deal. If it works out, I think you have a really good starting caliber cornerback, either at a cornerback one, cornerback two, or potentially a cornerback three for injury purposes. And if not, it's $1 million. It's not the biggest amount of cap space that you can spend. And it's a pretty low risk, but pretty high reward type of guy because Again, if he works out, you have a starting caliber cornerback. And if he doesn't work out, it's $1 million on the cap space, and it's really not that big of a deal. Now, Graham Glasgow is another player I think should be returning. Graham Glasgow is currently 32, will be 33 next year. I do believe the Detroit Lions need to plan for the future and plans to replace Graham Glasgow, but based off the performances he gave last year, I do think he could potentially be a guy the Lions want to bring back, keep that offensive line structure, keep that offensive line as healthy and together as possible. If he wants a lot of money, I don't necessarily believe he should get it. I didn't think he was an elite guard, but I did think he was a pretty good guard. So anything I'd say less than three to four million, something in that range, I'd keep him. If he wants a little bit more than that, wants kind of more of that premium to upper echelon guard money, I really don't think that he would necessarily be worth just because he's older and I think that they can improve off of Graham Glasgow either through the draft or potentially just giving Colby Soresdale more opportunities to grow and develop. Michael Badge is a player I think they should bring back. He was pretty much perfect from the moment he signed from the practice squad to the active roster. Hit a pretty much game-winning 54-yard field goal in the wild card round. I think they probably should have trusted him a little bit more in the NFC Championship game. He's been really reliable for the Detroit Lions and I think worst case scenario if you don't draft a kicker if you don't sign one through free agency, Michael Badgley is a guy that, as a worst-case scenario, is not 
a bad kicker nor a football player. Now, Josh Reynolds is a guy that I know a lot of people are upset about. There's a lot of emotional people saying that Josh Reynolds should not be re-signed to the Detroit Lions. I personally think he should. He was essentially the wide receiver two all season for the Detroit Lions. He was kind of the third player on the team as far as targets. Of course, it went Amon Ross St. Brown, Sam Laporta, and then and then Josh Reynolds was kind of that third guy, a guy that you go to on third down for clutch situations, a guy that you go to in fourth down opportunities for touchdowns or first downs. And yeah, he had a really poor game versus the San Francisco 49ers. Yeah, he did struggle and he did have that fourth down drop and he did have a third down drop and he probably feels worse than any other member of the Lions team. But I don't think we can take away from the season that Josh Reynolds did put together. I don't think we can take away from the big plays he made early in the season, the clutch plays he made late in the season, the big game he had in the wild card, and the crucial touchdown he had in the divisional round. Josh Reynolds was crucial to this playoff success and to this playoff run, and he's been crucial to the development and sustainability of Jared Goff over the last couple of years. I don't think he'll cost more than 3 to $4 million. If he does, about 5 6 even then, I would still probably keep him just because the Lions have so much cap space to play with this year. But Josh Reynolds coming back to be the wide receiver three, potentially the fourth or fifth target on the offense, I think he's a really good, reliable guy. He's a guy that you can still look to on late down, still look to on third and fourth down for a clutch play. And he's going to be a guy that nobody thinks about, right? When you're planning for the lines, you plan for St. Brown, you plan for Laporta, you plan for Jamison Williams, you plan for, you know, Gibbs and Monty. And Josh Reynolds is, you know, going down the list of weapons, probably the fourth fifth, maybe even sixth guy if they really believe in Donovan Peoples-Jones. So I think that you could re-sign him. I think he'd want to stay in Detroit. And I think for a worst case scenario, again, you keep a good depth wide receiver that has great chemistry with Jared Goff just in case Donovan Peoples-Jones doesn't take that step forward. Jalen rees maven the all-pro from last year, the core special teams player, special teams captain, will almost definitely return to the Detroit Lions. I don't think he'll be super expensive as he is mostly just a special teams player with a few ropes on the defense as well. I think he can get a pretty decent pay bump without breaking the bank and being a core special teams player and a special teams captain on top of being an all pro is probably a good move to bring back Jalen Rays. Maybe a lot of people are going to disagree with this, but I think the Lions should bring back Julian Okwara as well. A player that was fourth on the team in sacks and I believe third on the team in defensive line sacks with Alex Anzalone, the off ball linebacker, having just one more. As far as defensive line players on the lines, it went Aiden Hutchinson with 11 and a half, Ali McNeil with five and a half, and then it went Julian O'Quara with three. Julian O'Quara did not play more than 100 snaps on the defense this year and still walked away with three sacks. I'm not saying he's going to be a key role player. I'm not going to say he's going to be a game wrecker. I'm not here to say that he's going to start next year and be this all world player and turn into some Micah Parsons type player. But I do think if you're replacing guys like Romeo Aquara, replacing guys like Charles Harris, Julian Aquara is a young athletic athletic rusher who has some production, who has a high motor, that has some versatility, and he probably won't cost more than one to two million dollars a season. Jason Kabinda is another guy I think they should bring back. Jason Kabinda, just a guy that they really like at fullback, whether he stays on the practice squad, whether he's kind of an active member of the roster, moves back and forth. I think we can kind of work it out. He should not be very expensive, and I do think they will bring him back based off the role they gave him at the end of the regular season, as is Craig Reynolds, right? Craig Reynolds is a guy that I think a lot of Lions coaches like. He's a guy that kind of embodies what they like in a lot of players. He was super crucial when both David Montgomery and Jameer Gibbs missed time this year. He wasn't a great running back, but I think he was a really good role player. I think he's a really good guy to have on the roster. And again, if you go through free agency and you go through the draft and you don't find or you don't have the opportunity to bring in a better running back three, you could do a lot worse than Craig Reynolds, a player that has been pretty crucial for the Lions and again, scored a pretty big touchdown in a playoff game. Scott Daly is coming off of an injury, but I think the Lions really like him at long snapper. He'll probably be back for a pretty low price. Brock Wright is really the tight end too at this point. He's a really good player and I think could come back for a good price. But, you know, Jones, I don't think will be very expensive and he is kind of a top nose tackle on this team. Donovan Peoples-Jones, you just traded for him. So why you don't have to keep him? I do think the Lions have some longer term plans for Donovan Peoples-Jones. Khalil Dorsey, again, a core special teams player. Jerry Jacobs, a big part of the defense this year until he got benched late in the season. I think, again, Depth cornerback is a cornerback five, cornerback six. You could do a lot worse than Jerry Jacobs. And then James Houston, I think, will be signed as an exclusive rights free agent. Him and Khalil Dorsey are pretty much guaranteed to return. 
they are exclusive right free agents, which basically means they're under contract with the Detroit Lions as long as the Detroit Lions want to keep them around. So I think that they will do so. I think they will bring back both Houston and Dorsey. They shouldn't be very expensive, and they're two players that can very much contribute. Dorsey, of course, on special teams, and James Houston, of course, on the defense as a pass rusher. That means the players that are walking include C.J. Gardner-Johnson, the prized free agent acquisition from last year, and a player that just really didn't live up to the hype. I know he had two interceptions in five games. I know he was pretty solid for the Detroit Lions overall, but I really just don't think the price tag is necessary when they have three great safeties already. They have Kirby Joseph. They have Ifiatu Melofano. They have... Um, you know, Brian Branch, who's playing a slot cornerback. So if you want to bring back C.J. Garner-Johnson, I think you can. But I think with the emergence of Ifiatsu, I think with the great play of Kirby, I think with the outstanding play of Brian Branch as a rookie, you can either negotiate C.J. and say, hey, we don't really need you that bad, but we'd like you back and kind of offer him a lower price. If he takes that lower price, by all means, bring him back. I think a full season of C.J. Garner-Johnson could be beneficial to a Lions secondary, but... I don't think you necessarily need him with the other three safeties that you could get, as well as a couple good sleeper safeties in both free agency and the draft. I think Jonah Jackson is gone. Jonah Jackson is a great player. Jonah Jackson is a great guard, but the Detroit Lions were five and six without him this year. They were okay. They were fine without Jonah Jackson, and you can't pay big money because I think Jonah will want big money. I don't think you can pay that to a player that missed 11 games last year and has had serious injury concerns over the last couple of years. Now, if Jonah comes back on a very incentives-based contract and the Detroit Lions draft a guard just in case, I think it could work. But again, it has to be the right price for Jonah Jackson, and it's by no means a bring back at all costs. Romeo Harris, Romeo Quara, and Charles Harris are two players I think are very much gone. Charles Harris was a healthy scratch for a most, if not all, of the late season stretch of the Detroit Lions, and Romeo Quara although he was not a healthy scratch, is getting older, is not under contract anymore, will free up quite a bit of money for the Detroit Lions and has the last couple of years with restructures. Getting the rest of that contract off the books, I think would be more beneficial than keeping Romeo around. If he wants to come back for really cheap, I think it's possible. But again, I just don't think you need Romeo Okwara at this point. Dan Skipper, I think, is out. Dan Skipper, of course, infamous this year for being eligible or not being an eligible player for the Detroit Lions receivers. I think he is a good player. I think he could be a good depth piece, but he is 30 years old, kind of aging out and kind of getting rid of some of the older players, bringing in some younger guys to take the spot. I don't think that Skipper did anything phenomenal. I don't think he was necessarily a great tackle, a great sixth tackle or anything like that. Again, if you bring him back for a little cheap, by all means, go for it. But I think you can get younger without losing a whole lot there and potentially get a little bit cheaper. Nate Sudfeld, I think, is probably gone, was on IR all season. I know Teddy Bridgewater is likely retiring after this year, meaning you will need a third quarterback for the preseason. You might bring him back very late in the process, but I just don't think he's going to end up making the roster. So at that point, might as well get a look at potentially a younger guy or potentially even more of like closer to that Teddy Bridgewater archetype if you don't feel like Hendon Hooker is quite ready. I just don't see Nate Sudfeld making the roster. Therefore, I don't see necessarily the point in bringing him back just to kind of be feed for the preseason. Uh, Charles Will Harris, I think, is not going to be back either. Will Harris is a player that I know the Lions really like. I think could be a decent slot option, but... I just don't think he's going to be back. Didn't really play a whole lot. Even with the Detroit Lions having so many issues at cornerback this year, they didn't trust putting Will Harris on the field very often. I think it speaks volumes to a guy that they say publicly that they really like, but behind the scenes, it's very clear that he is the bottom of the barrel at that DB room. And really, he's only above maybe a guy like Stephen Gilmore and maybe Jerry Jacobs at the very bottom. But I mean, at this point, if you're going to be at best a backup slot cornerback, I think you could get a lot cheaper than what Will Harris is going to be asking for based off of last year's contract. Same thing goes with Nelson as it did for Skipper. I just think you can get better and younger and cheaper. Uh, Jake McQuaid is a player that was pretty impactful late down the stretch, was a player that was pretty impactful late down the stretch for the Detroit Lions with Scott Daly going down. He's 36. He very well could retire this year, and I pretty much expect him to do so. Therefore, he will not be back. Kendall Vilder can very much get off the football team. Um, I think he was not a necessarily a bad cornerback for the situation the Lions were in, but especially after that NFC Championship game, really a 
poor playoff run in general and not making too many plays for the Detroit Lions secondary, I do think he is going to be gone. He gave up the big play to CeeDee Lamb. He gave up big plays to Justin Jefferson. He gave up big plays to Puka Nakua and the Rams. He gave up that big touchdown to Tutu Atwell in the playoffs, gave up that big play, of course, to Brandon Ayuk in the playoffs. I just don't think he's a quality starting cornerback in the NFL, and I think that you could do significantly better with prospects or free agents. I think Shane Zylstra is gone. I like Zylstra. He was pretty good two years ago, but after a really bad knee injury and getting a year older, I think he's potentially getting phased out. And with three really good tight ends like Laporta, Wright, and Mitchell, I just don't see a spot for Zylstra on the team. Pittman, again, I think could be sticking around as a special teams guy. I think the Lions really like him, but I think he could also potentially be gone from the roster as he's a little bit older, a little bit more expensive for second or for special teams use. It just could potentially be replaced. And then Zonovan Knight, a guy that was on the roster for a couple of weeks, went on IR as a young running back, was kind of hyped up quite a bit from the Jets, but ended up not being too impactful. And I think the Lions, again, could move on for a better running back four, whether that be a rookie, an undrafted free agent, whatever the case may be. I think you can upgrade over Zonovan Knight in the draft. Now, that leaves the active roster looking like this going into free agency and the draft. Jared Goff is obviously your quarterback backed up by Hedden Hooker. Jameer Gibbs and David Montgomery are your one-two punch at running back with Craig Reynolds being your three. Amon Ross St. Brown, Jamison Williams, and likely... Josh Reynolds will be your top three wide receivers, although I do think this year JMO will overtake Josh Reynolds as the pure wide receiver too, with, of course, Khalif Raymond, Donovan Peoples-Jones, and Antoine Green kind of fighting it out for that four, five, and six. I do believe potentially the DPJ could turn into the wide receiver three and potentially put Josh Reynolds out of the job and out of Detroit, but I think they'll keep around Josh Reynolds if they can help it. Sam Laporta will be tight end one, Brock Gray returning as tight end two, and James Mitchell solidifying tight end three. Taylor Deckel will be left tackle, Ragnall will be the center, Glasgow will be the right guard for at least one more year, and Penny Sewell will be the right tackle for hopefully a very long time, leaving really the only change in the really whole on offense, and an offense that was top five in the NFL in every category this year, is going to be that left guard spot, whether it's going to be a whether it's going to be Soresdale moving positions, whether it's going to be a free agent or a draft pickup, a Zach Zinner or a guy maybe potentially earlier than that. I do believe the Detroit Lions will address it in free agency, but I think they will get a significantly cheaper option than Jonah Jackson, but simultaneously getting a more talented option than Owaskia and Soresdale will be. I think it's going to be kind of that middle ground of closer to the talent of Jackson, but closer to the price tag of the other two. On defense, things can move around a little bit more. Hutchinson, Aleem, Pascal, and Houston will be your front four, likely with John Kaminsky, Benito Jones, and a couple other playmakers in the background. You have Alex Anzalone, Jack Campbell, Derek Barnes, and Malcolm Rodriguez as your linebackers. I don't think that needs to be touched this year if you want to bring in another guy to replace Anthony Pittman. I think that's very possible, but you have those four, plus Jalen Reeves may have been returning as well as a potentially a role player on defense, but likely more of a special team star. You have five really good line. Backers, I don't think you really need to touch it. Cornerback is where it gets really scary. You then have Cameron Sutton as your cornerback one, likely Stephen Gilmore or Jerry Jacobs as your cornerbacks two and three. They don't have a whole lot of depth there if they're letting go of Vilder and Harris at the same time. You, of course, have Chase Lucas there as well, who could potentially be a starting cornerback for them in this scenario. If Ifiatu Malafon with safety, Kirby Joseph as the other safety, and Brian Branch as the starting slot cornerback, a player that can play safety, corner, probably even sneak in at linebacker if you really wanted him to. A versatile piece of the defense and a piece that Aaron Glenn could use, meaning, of course, that throughout the free agency process, throughout the draft, and of course, oh, actually, I take that back. I put in the graphic, but Mosley would be included. I just don't know if he'd be ready for week one. So you'd have Sutton and Mosley with Branch at the slot, probably draft a cornerback for cornerback four. You have Jerry Jacobs as your cornerback five. Stephen Gilmore as your cornerback six. That's not a bad group of cornerbacks. I think you can still improve upon it, but I do think that is a decent little group of Sutton potentially being cornerback two, Mosley being cornerback one, a rookie cornerback coming in throughout the draft, as well as Gilmore and Jacobs and Lucas as your backup quarterbacks. And then you have Ifiatu and Kirby as your two safeties. I think you draft a safety to replace CJ Gardner-Johnson, but there are a number of guys there that I think could do the job as a fourth safety. And of course, you still have Tracy Walker, who is a pretty capable safety in his own right. So 
So with that being said, that is kind of an easy, quick little rundown of the free agency market. Of course, when free agents start going around, when we actually start to resign players, we'll update this and we'll kind of take a look at the roster as it grows, develops, and changes. But right now, that's how I think the Lions should attack free agency. I think they should try to keep as many core players as possible. I think all of the resignings we talked about from you know Josh Reynolds at the top all the way down to you know Scott Daly at the bottom – you could probably get them all back for twenty million, leaving thirty million dollars for free agency and cap space, and uh, you know the draft and all things like that. So I think the Lions are in a pretty good position cap space wise. They have quite a few picks to make some good things happen, and I do think that the defense is in a good spot to build off of, but certainly still needs potentially another pass rusher and some cornerback help. But with all that being said, that's all I got for you guys today. Let me know what you would change. Let me know what you would sign. Which players do you want to see return? Which players do you want to see walk and potentially leave Detroit? I'd be very curious. Do you guys have to say so let me know down in the comments below but with all of that being said that's all i got for you guys right now thank you all so very much for watching and until next time and as always go lions